Welcome back. Hour number two. We're going to spend some time tonight with Jordan Maxwell, who is continuing to shine as one of the great visionaries and great scholars of our time. In fact, a man who has spawned the careers of dozens of people who have borrowed liberally from his work. He has been for 50 years studying the Illuminati symbols right in our faces. The arrogance, the conceit, the condescension, the rudeness of these people knows no bounds. Human life, of course, means absolutely nothing to them. Nothing. They feed on death and suffering. They feed on the destruction of the minds and the hearts and the souls of the otherwise innocent goyim who are put in uniform through trickery and deception and sent overseas to kill and be killed. They mean nothing to these people. As Henry Kissinger said in the early 70s, anyone who goes in the military, I hate to say it, but should know better. I'm going to be charitable and stop right there. Jordan, welcome back to the program. How are you, my friend? Well, thank you very much, Jeff. I'm still here despite everything. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, it's an incredible world. We, you know, who would have ever thought we would find our country and our and our lives in the disarray and the profound uh, totalitarian regime that we find that you know find ourselves in now? It's no longer. It's yeah. It's not our no. country anymore. This is no, not our country. No, of course not. Of course not. It's gone. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I I. I figured out a long time ago that the political thing, I figure everybody should know by now. Anybody who's got 500 brain cells going in all the same direction should know by now what's going on with the, with the, you know, with the republic and with the country. So I'm not even interested to talk about the, uh, the apparatus that is now strangling and killing the republic. And right. you know, in a way, our constitution, our hallowed document, the greatest document probably ever conceived by, by humankind in a nation-state format, has been our undoing. Because of our Constitution and our Bill of Rights, we had to be destroyed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that, 100%. No doubt about it. And our enemies have now taken over our government and taken over our Constitution. So, yeah, it's true. Our enemies hate our freedom. That's why we don't have any, because they're taking it away every day. Isn't it so, amazing, uh, Jordan? No. To, it's amazing to see alleged Americans enforcing the will and the destruction <clears throat> of their own country. And what doing it, they are, they are the dumbest asses in history. Today, our enemies are here, and, you know, and the people, unfortunately, don't see the importance of it because it has nothing to do with basketball. So, yeah, no. what else can I say? Exactly. <laughs> here's, uh, here's a little uh, quickie. I played this last hour. I want to play it again. It's Wesley Clark uh, in 2007 looking back uh, just after 9-11. In fact, on September 20th, he is making an observation of what he ran into in the Pentagon nine days after September 11th. Uh, it merits repeating. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz, I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, "Sir, you gotta come in. You gotta come in and talk to me a second. I said, "Well, you're too busy." He said, "No, no." He says, "We've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq." This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, "We're going to war with Iraq. Why?" He said, "I don't know." <laughs> He said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, 
This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Well, there it is. Uh, it's all planned. Uh, no accidents and no coincidences. Nope. No. All right, Jordan, I'm going to suggest something here. I think that this has been engineered to the extent that what we're seeing now is the unprecedented takeover of the mass psyche of not only this country, but the, the, of the world in general. And there was any part of the world that has exposure to the mass media promulgated, of course, and injected into the subconscious by television, primarily. I believe now that the mass media combine in this country, whether it be People magazine in print, whether it be MTV and all the rest of the visual things, whether it be just audio uh, via the music, doesn't matter. I believe that that combine of media is now, to a large degree, the actual virtual consciousness and brain of the majority of the masses of this country. I believe it thinks for them. I believe it decides for them. I believe they are hopelessly, irrevocably consulting with it 24 hours a day without even knowing it because of the ability to project into the subconscious and the conscious mind all the time the imagery, the thoughts, the processes, the boundaries. I believe we are living now with people in a secondary role to a virtual consciousness and a brain that has been created with utter and full intent. Is that Absolutely. off the wall too much, Jordan? No, I think that's precisely stating the situation exactly. There was a very important book that came out many years ago that you really need to know, and you probably already know about it, but everyone should get a copy. It's called Four Arguments for the Elimination of oh, Television. Oh, television, of course, sure. And it's an extraordinarily expose of how television was produced, who did it, how they did it, and why they did it. So you're right. Uh, it's a mass consciousness that has now engulfed the world. But uh, It's not human. No, not at all. And I've been saying that for a long time, that the people who are at the top of the ladder running the world are not, in fact, human. I mean, I, I go in, uh, as a matter of fact, I go a step further and take it into the, uh, to, to the religious field. I think there is something to the idea that has been expressed in all ancient religions of the world, and I do mean all of them, from Egypt to the Sumerian to the uh, ancient uh, Hebrew, it's always been there in all ancient religions that the world is actually being run by uh, alien life forms. You know, the Christians call them devils, demons. Uh, in the Bible, they've got different names for these entities. Uh, they were called sons of God. One of the reasons why I think this is because the, the people who are running the planet really do not care about the human family, about children, about women, about older people, they don't care. They, like George Kerwin said, they don't care one way or the other. They have never cared. They are in power, and, uh, and the idea is to break the spirit of the human rights and so that you will be in compliance. And uh, they don't care who, what, who they hurt. They don't care if old, old people have spent their whole life you know, building a country and building for for the future and take their homes away, take their money and throw them into the garbage. They don't care. Couldn't care less. So I do believe that there is a spiritual component to what we're seeing going on. We are being ruled by evil men. And, you know, I, I don't know what to do about it because it's a cosmic problem. It hasn't got anything to do with politics now. It has no. nothing to do with saving America. Nothing right. at all. No, no. Agreed. Our problem is saving the whole human race. Well, Period. it's it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Uh, nope. They're going to end up doing what they want, and what they want is to reduce it by 80% or more. Uh, they'll do that any time they want. And if they were ever challenged, Jordan, 
with any kind of an insurrection planet-wide by humankind. They'll just go to the shelf and pull down a freeze-dried organism or 10 and turn them loose, and that'll be the end of people. It's, it's absolutely doable and ready to go right now. There is no, no way it. to resist. Resistance no, is futile. I'm sorry, the door is closed. I've been saying that for years. And people I know you have. Condemn me and, and, but I've been saying, if you just look at the facts of life, and how life works. The science is, is owned by the dark awesome. side. The science of is owned by is. evil. Of course. Uh, every single time someone comes up with something that will help the human race, some great invention, immediately the, it's taken over by government. It is national security taken over. A classic example is uh, Royal Rife. Uh, his, his work, well, he's gone. They took care of him quick. And whatever it was he did, they got rid of that as quick as possible. Uh, you know, and Stanley Meyer. Up. Stanley Meyer, the scientist who discovered how to simply and efficiently crack hydrogen out of water, had a water-propelled car, a dune buggy, 130 yeah. miles of the gallon, and uh, they murdered him in his own hometown restaurant. That's on uh, YouTube video. Stanley Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. If you haven't seen the video, go look it up. Now, years ago, you were the first one to point out that semantics were one of the prime weapons. Black is white, up is down, war is peace, and so on. Well, Obama, that subhuman cretin, or cretin, however you'd like to pronounce the word, gave a, a speech today, which I, I certainly didn't watch. But the headline on CNN says, Obama, not acting in Libya, quote, would have been a betrayal of who we are. Now, what he's trying to say, of course, is that we would have let down our democratic ideals, but in point of fact, if we hadn't acted and aren't acting and slaughtering in, in Libya, it would have been a betrayal of who we are, because who we are is a slaughterer of humanity. We are the great Satan. We are the most evil country, arguably, in the history of the planet. And don't talk to me about Germany and World War II. You can bring up Soviet, Russia, and Stalin. I'll, I'll entertain that. But the totality of what's going on right now, with the United States literally being the bitch of the controllers and doing its killing, getting blood all over it, has never been duplicated, to my knowledge. This is, this is an incredible parasitized relationship of the most heinous alleged human behavior that I have ever seen. Uh, and, and you see how really deep and bad this thing really is uh, and in your face at the airport. Uh, when I go to the airport, I was just there a couple of days ago, <clears throat> and uh, all you see are big, fat, useless retards walking around, uh, high-fiving each other, uh, loud-mouth, arrogant, loud-mouth, walking around with their badges and uh, and making sure that everybody, all Americans, are in compliance uh, with the government uh, arrangements. Everybody's got to be in compliance. And then outside, you see everywhere police cars, all kinds of security. Uh, you know, that's where we are. We've lost our freedom. We've lost the country. We've lost it all. 